Hello again, fellow audiophiles. I am Wave Theory, and today's review is this. This is the Vice Audio DAC 204 digital to analog converter and digital to digital converter, which is a very unique feature set that we will uh, get into here in the course of the review. 2,895 US dollars is the MSRP on this. This was loaned to me by a friend of the channel who has his own YouTube channel called Lo Fiden. I will link over to that so you can say thank you to him for the loan on this. Uh, Vice Audio has no idea that I have this here or that I am doing this review, so all of the thoughts you are about to hear are mine and mine alone. So let's go ahead and do shameless self-promotion and then we will get into what makes the DAC 204 tick. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Please remember to hit that like button and if you haven't, please subscribe. Also, I have a Patreon set up so that you can help support me on a monthly basis and I've set up a PayPal donation so that you can help me out in that way too if a monthly dis a subscription does not make sense for you. Links for all of that, including the benefits in the description below, please check those out. All right, on with the show. So what we have in this product here is Vice Audio's DAC 205 digital to analog converter and then their INT204 digital to digital converter slash USB interface in the same chassis here. And so that makes it a very unique product out on the market here in that it is a quality DAC, converts digital signals to an analog output and is also a digital to digital converter and a good one at that converting digital input signals into other types of digital output signals all in one box so that's a very unique feature set that we will get uh, into the unpacking of here through the course of the review so uh it's compact as far as dax go you know at 2900 you know nearly three thousand dollars it is a pretty small compact unit here. And so that's a, a bit unique in and of itself. So it uses a Delta Sigma uh, conversion on the DAC side of it. Uh, Vice Audio's website does not say what chip manufacturer they go with. They just said that there are four dig Delta Sigma uh, devices on each channel. So that also means that it's a fully balanced DAC. I will show you a closer look at the uh, back panel here in a minute. From the USB input, it will accept DSD up to DSD uh, 1024, something really high. Okay, yeah, that may not be accurate, but it's a pretty high multiplier of DSD. And PCM files up to 32-bit, 384 kilohertz. From its SPDIF inputs, it will accept PCM signals up to 24-bit, 192 kilohertz. Okay, and then curiously, the digital to digital conversion part um, of it is Vice Audio has kind of made a name for themselves in terms of how they handle DSD or direct stream digital files. Okay, and so uh, this one, it's a special claim to fame here is that it does DSD to PCM conversion. And so it will also, it has three different flavors of digital audio output on it that will um, uh, output a PCM file after taking a digital uh, a DSD signal in. And you can vary that output of the DSD to PCM conversion anywhere from 16-bit to 24-bit word length and then 88.2 kilohertz to 176.4 kilohertz sampling rates on all of that. Okay, so with all of that out of the way, and again, that is, that is a very unique feature set for uh, a piece of gear here. Right, and so I have some thoughts on what kind of use cases this might be for or not for that we will talk about here towards the end of the review. Because I'll tell you what, this thing sounds pretty good. Okay, it is a it's a pretty good DAC. It's got a pretty good D, uh, DDC in it and all of that. So I mean, it sounds good. It is right on the performance level of say like a Cord Cutis or Hugo 2 in terms of its digital to analog conversion. Sounds similar to those, although not quite the same, and I'll unpack differences here as we get into it. Um, and it's, again, it's DDC is also very good. It's just that, um, I, and I will unpack more of this, the use case here, like this is an even nichier product than high-end audio gear already tends to be. 
And so, yeah, let me explain all of that here as we continue on through the course of the review. Front panel, pretty basic, pretty easy here. We have a power toggle switch here. We have these two switches right here, which will do what I just talked about there, where if you want to output a PCM signal here after having accepted DSD and use the DSD to PCM conversion here, you have switches to set it to a 16-bit or 24-bit output and then an 88.2 kilohertz or a 176.4 kilohertz output there. This switch is your input selector, Toslink optical um, SPDIF RCA a coaxial SPDIF and USB input. And then here we have the input type and sampling rate power indicator here with all of these LEDs going on right here. Pretty basic. Again, a small package here, all aluminum, fairly well built. On the back, we have DC power input. So this comes with a medical grade power supply. I will show you that in just a moment, but it accepts six to nine volt DC input here. So you can bring your own power supply if you want. I did try an aftermarket power supply with this, which I will comment on in the sound section. We have both the XLR balanced and RCA unbalanced stereo analog outputs here up top. We have the RCA coax and uh, SPDIF Toslink optical here, okay, inputs right here. USB audio inputs way down here. And then we have three outputs for the uh, DDC section, BNC coax, SPDIF, RCA coax, SPDIF, and AES EBU, SPDIF, okay? Two switches here where you can vary the output level of the analog outputs, and I think this may not be true, but I think it also affects the digital outputs here, is you can attenuate the signal by 10 decibel or 20 decibel um, amounts with the, these toggle switches right here. So you can actually have a very hot, high voltage output, not super high, but a very loud output high and level, and you can attenuate that down with the number of steps allowed by these toggle switches. Okay, not a very heavy unit overall, small footprint makes it desktop friendly. All right, here is the included or stock power supply. Okay, two prong here. It has a detachable cord here into the power brick section where the power brick is in the middle of the power cord. We have fairly standard DC connector here on the end that goes into the deck. This power supply box here is rated as a nine volt, two amp output. And honestly, it's not too bad. It seems really cheap. It is among the cheaper power supplies I've seen of a piece of electronics up in this price range, um, or at least cheaper looking. But uh, performance wise, it ended up being pretty solid. Actually, I did try an aftermarket power supply from a small green computer, one of their little adjustable output voltage output linear power supplies. It did make a sonic difference, though not a huge one. I will come back to that in the uh, sound section. All right, so that's the build of this thing and the features. Um, let's just talk about use cases here for a moment because this is where I have the biggest questions about this DAC. Because um, as we transition to the sound here in a little bit, I'm gonna tell you like this thing does sound pretty darn good, okay? Uh, and it handles DSD very, very well. My question about it is why do we need the, what is essentially the INT204 DDC and the DAC 205 together in the same box. You get a pretty good DAC and a pretty good DDC. The purpose of using a DDC is to get a digital signal into a flavor that a DAC that you like can use it. And so you can do that with this, but then it also has a really good DAC in it. It just seems to have competing feature sets or a feature set that competes with itself almost. So like, where this is going to be truly useful to someone, I think is going to be, again, a, of the nichiest of niches here in our already niche hobby. And, and that is someone who has likely a warmer, smoother DAC already that they really like the sound of, but does not have DSD uh, conversion on it or DSD decoding on it. 
and they are simultaneously looking to be able to keep that DAC in their signal chain and then get a more neutral and slightly more incisive sounding DAC to complement that other one. That's where something like this is going to step in. How many users are going to find that helpful? I really don't know, but that's about the only use case that I can think of. And even me as a reviewer who is trying different use cases all of the time, I, I, I struggled to really find a true home use case for the entire feature set of this thing, okay, all in one box here. So I suspect that the number of people that need that DDC and a DAC because they want a different flavored DAC and to be able to, to send uh, DSD to their existing non-DSD decoding DAC and they have a huge library of DSD files, I, th I suspect that that user is fairly rare. Okay, and, I, and, e and possibly even more rare than we audiophile snobs are to begin with in terms of what we're looking for in use cases and that sort of thing. Okay, so that's that's my take on like the use cases of this, and it's just kind of an odd duck constraddling those two worlds there. Um, but let's talk about the actual performance then, because it actually is a very good performer. So test gear on this. This spent uh, some time, I, I connected the RCA coax input here to the RCA coax output of my Singer SU6 DDC, which was in turn connected via USB to my Sonor Ultra Rendu streamer. The digital or the USB input in here spent some time connected directly to my very noisy USB output on my uh, custom built uh, Windows 10 desktop PC. And then I also at some point stuck a Singer UIP1 USB isolation processor, um, which is basically another level of galvanic isolation uh, in the USB line between that same computer and this thing. And then I used the RCA coax output of, of this one to go into my uh, Berkeley Alpha Series 2 DAC to check um, how the DSD conversion and all of that was going, uh, was doing with this unit. Now, for amplifiers, uh, the balanced output here was connected to both my Vioelectric HPA V281 headphone amp and recently got in the Headamp GSX Mini, um, which I have reviewed in written form a long time ago. I will link to that down below and put a link to my Vio V281 review. And I will also be uh, doing a video review of the Mini at some point in the not too distant future as this pile of gear that I'm working through allows me to get to. Okay, the single-ended outputs here were also connected to those same amps, but then also the LTA MZ3, which I have been working on a review for, and that review is also nearing completion, so look out for that video here very soon. All right, then after that, headphones used would have been primarily hi fi Men Susvara and HE1000SE, Focal Utopia, a couple of others slipped in there as well, but those would be the three main ones that I listened to while evaluating the DAC performance of this. And then the MZ3 for a time, or sometimes was also connected to my Yamo C93 Mark II bookshelf speakers on my uh, desk. So this got a little bit of time as a DAC in that setting as well. Okay, the sound of this, let's start with the DAC section here and the sound is fairly neutral overall. Um, it is more neutral than it isn't. I think there might be a slight, and I mean a very slight V-shape to its perceived frequency response. It seems like the upper treble is a little bit more present than some of the other DACs that I have on hand, like my Chord Hugo 2, like my Berkeley Alpha Series 2, okay, for example, while at the same time it is also has a little bit more mid-bass presence, so it has a little bit more warmth to it than those same DACs just named. 
very slight increases above neutral in each of those things, but I think it does uh, end up being a very, very shallow V in, in terms of its perceived frequency response, although it still comes across as much more neutral than it is not. Okay, the sound stage is pretty wide and expansive. The lateral imaging and separation is very good with what good placement of sonic images, good space between, uh, between them. Okay, the depth and layering are also solid. They are not set the world on fire good. They are far from poor, I would say. They are just kind of pretty appropriate for the price of this unit here. The overall presentation is a little bit more smooth and laid back. There are some decent dynamics here, but they are not the star of the show. It's just a little bit more relaxed and smooth presentation overall to the DAC sound. It also has a very quiet sonic background, and that stood out to me uh, in several different cases, where it's just the, the sonic background on this one is just very dead quiet. Uh, more so than uh, like Chord Hugo 2, which is already very quiet, Berkeley Alpha Series 2, already very quiet. It just stood out to me that there was a really dark sonic background to this one. Okay, um, And then like the way that it stages, I mentioned the staging, the distance from head to like where the first row of music comes from um, seems to be just a little bit of farther than average. So it's just a little bit more distant sounding. But again, that's just a preference thing. It's not really a problem. It's just the way that it is there. Resolution is very good. There's good texturing. There's good um, uh, uh, resolution of like room reverbs, the zizziness of, of the sound of bows being dragged across strings and all of that. Like all of the details and all of that are there. Again, a more relaxed presentation, but they are there. I do think in terms of overall performance, it is, I, I said this before here, but I'll just say it again as a reminder, it is right on the level of like the Chord Hugo 2, Chord Cutest level of uh, sound quality, which is good company. Those are very good DACs, and I think this one is right there with them in terms of its overall technical ability. It just has uh, some slight, and I do mean slight, presentational differences to those DACs. Okay, the, the DSD to PCM conversion here and using this as a DDC is also excellent. This is probably the best DSD to PCM conversion that I have heard. Um, and it's, I mean, but I'm mostly comparing to like software-based players on that because like I have a few DSD albums in my collection, not a ton of them, a few. And so... I don't need a ton of DSD decoding, and more often than not, the DSD conversion that I get through Rune or Ottervana and all of that has been fine. I haven't had any issues with that, really. The DSD to PCM conversion here is cleaner and slightly more detailed and definitely quieter, again, in that sonic background than using those software-based DSD to PCM um, players. So you do get a very good DDC, especially if you are interested in DSD to PCM conversion. You do get a pretty good DAC in here, okay? All in one box if that matters to you. Now, let me come back to that power supply here for just a moment. Uh, I did connect that small green computer linear power supply, and I'll put a link down to that uh, in the description below. And that did drop that, that sonic background just a little bit, even lower yet. Did make the sound a little bit overall cleaner. And it brought out just a little bit more true deep bass presence, true sub bass presence, a little bit more rumble to it. Okay, um, And so it did make a sonic difference there, upgrading to that uh, LPS. But I will say that the difference that this, the LPS on this unit made is smaller than the performance gap, the performance gain, I should say, I have gotten using that LPS with other DACs or with other pieces of audio gear in general. So it helped, just wasn't as big a help as it has been with other things. I will also mention here a difference in the quality of the balanced analog output compared to the single-ended analog output here. So I have complained about this before on the channel, and I'm going to keep doing it for as long as it is relevant. 
this sounds better from the balanced XLR outputs than it does the, the single-ended RCA outputs. Noticeably so. Cleaner, more coherent soundstage, lower, um, lower noise floor again, that sonic background thing uh, with this unit. And then also just the, uh, the overall resolution is, is higher um, than this here too. Now, which input do I recommend you using? The USB implementation on this is pretty good, which contributes to the quality of the DSD to PCM conversion uh, for sure. For just PCM files, I really did not notice a huge difference between the USB and the SPDIF inputs on this one. But if you're gonna use DSD, you've gotta use that USB and the USB implementation on this is very, very good. It's well galvanically isolated, it's very quiet, it filtered out a lot of noise. The Singer UIP-1 helped just ever so slightly. It didn't really, really need it though. The USB implementation on this is very good at cleaning up signals on its own. All right, what else do I need to talk about here with this one? Um, I've kind of already let the cat out of the bag a little bit with the comparisons. Like, I mean, my Cord Hugo 2, which is also right there around $2,800, $2,900 these days, and is also a, a thing that has a bit of a unique feature set on it. It's a transportable DAC and amp, so it has a headphone amplifier section in it, sort of. It's not really a true amp. It's a higher voltage output of the FPGA, but anyway, okay, um, it has that. It's got Bluetooth on it. It's uh, battery powered and all that, so it also has a fairly unique and robust feature set to it. And the two of them, again, they are very, very close in overall quality. I would say in terms of resolution and timbre and their accuracy of their imaging and their separation and their the size of their sound staging and all of that, they are pretty much dead even with each other. This one just has a little bit more mid-bass presence and a little bit more really high air presence, all that to create this just very slight V-shape. The... Uh, the distance between head and the first row of sounds is a little bit greater than the Hugo 2, so it's like it just sounds a little bit more distant. And it's not quite as dynamic as the Hugo 2 is. It's not quite as active or lively um, in its sound as Hugo 2. But again, those are not signs of one being better than the other. Just a lot of those are more preference-based presentational things going on. But that's just to help you like uh, place this that this is an appropriately priced unit but there as a DAC and like for what it does as a DAC and a DDC and just a, a, a feature laden although a very odd and unusual feature set but as a feature laden piece. So I think I can go ahead and leave it here on the DAC 204. Very good DAC, very good DDC. I just don't really understand why those two things are existing together in the same box. Again, it is very good at the two things that it does, just I don't understand so much why they are put together, save for what I imagine is going to be a quite rare use case where again, someone already has a DAC that has a specific sound that they like that doesn't decode DSD and they have a growing DSD library and they want to be able to complement that different sounding DAC with a more neutral, slightly more, um, or just a more neutral, not necessarily incisive, but possibly a little bit more incisive in its sound than what they already have. That to me is the use case. I suspect that's gonna be rather rare. If you're just interested in the DSD to PCM conversion, Vice has their INT204, which is the DDC that does the, the really high quality DC, DSD to PCM conversion. I can put a link to that down below uh, in the description as well. And if you're just interested in the DAC performance of this, they have their DAC205, which in my understanding is that this DAC204 is the 205 and the INT204 put into the same box. Okay. So, I am Wave Theory. This has been my review of the Vice Audio DAC 204. Please comment down below, leave a like on this video, subscribe if you haven't yet. Uh, check out my PayPal and my Patreon and look for ways to support the channel. Thanks for watching again, and as always, enjoy the music.